Good morning and welcome, everybody. Um, I understand that uh, the hymns today, you will have to use your hymn books because apparently uh, easy worship is not up to functioning this morning. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him there is great power to save. O Israel, hope in the Lord, and trust in his holy name. Our first hymn is number 74, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation, hymn 74. Let us pray. Loving God, we come together as your people, setting aside for this time our everyday life, our work and our leisure, our duties and distractions, to center ourselves on you. May your life-giving spirit live in us, filling us with peace, uniting us with Christ, and may the worship we offer be acceptable to you. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
God of grace, there are times when we feel so far away from you, when we are swamped by the problems in our lives, when we turn away from you to follow our own desires, when we are dried up, isolated, broken, when we long for a peace we cannot find. We wonder why you do not hear our cries for help. In you, Lord, there is forgiveness. And when we stop and turn to ask for the gift for the forgiveness you promise, we find it is already given. When we silence our cries, we find you have heard us all along and your still, small voice speaks to us of steadfast love. In your endless mercy, give us the grace to receive your forgiveness, to embrace your love and to live again in the light of your hope. Amen. We will now sing the Lord's Prayer together. We will now sing hymn number 295, Breathe on me, breath of God. Hymn number 295.
67 verses 1 to 14. I felt the powerful presence of the Lord, and his spirit took me and set me down in a valley where the ground was covered with bones. He led me all round the valley, and I could see that they were very many bones and that they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal man, can these bones come back to life? I replied, Sovereign Lord, only you can answer that. He said, Prophecy to the bones. Tell these dry bones to listen to the word of the Lord. Tell them that I, the Sovereign Lord, am saying to them, I'm going to put breath into you and bring you back to life. I will give you sinews and muscles and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and bring you back to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been told. While I was speaking, I heard a rattling noise and the bones began to join together. While I watched, the bones were covered with sinews and muscles and then with skin, and there was no breath in the bodies. God said to me, Mortal man, prophesy to the wind. Tell the wind that the Sovereign Lord commands it to come from every direction, to breathe into these dead bodies, and to bring them back to life. So I prophesied, as I've been told, Breath entered the bodies and they came to life and stood up. There were enough of them to form an army. God said to me, Mortal man, the people of Israel are like these bones. They say that they are dried up without any hope and with no future. So prophesy for Israel and tell them that I, the sovereign Lord, am going to open their graves. I'm going to take them and bring them back to the land of Israel. When I open the graves where my people are buried and bring them there, they will know that I am the Lord. I will put my breath in them, bring them back to life and let them live in their own land. Then they would know that I am the Lord. I have promised that I would do this, and I will. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. Now, I, I know that a lot of you will have heard that reading before, and I wonder if you got the powerful message that it contains about the transforming power of God. So what do we know about transformations? For all I know, you may have had a transformation. We've seen transformations on television, haven't we? Where people put themselves into the hands of what I think is called a stylist guru. And this person comes along and says, well, you're obviously wearing all the wrong clothes. And um, let's see, that haircut's got to go. You have to change your haircut. And then your face, oh, we'll have to do something about that. <laughs> and so you might end up having a facelift or um, collagen implants and all that stuff. And when you look in the mirror, you think, is that me? You're unrecognizable. So, transformations to occur. Now, we're going to listen now, this all has a link with our reading, to some music, which is a musical interpretation of this, the reading we've just heard. Can we have the music, please, Abby? Um. Hip-hop. 
enjoyed that musical interpretation and it was about transformation wasn't it because the dry bones became transformed to living people and not only living but joyful people but we need to go back to the reading to understand the full significance of this the dry bones are the people of Israel they're in a valley which is parched a vision like this can get over a message in a powerful way. We can imagine a dry valley where there's no water and the bones are just lying there. And they're lying there because they have no, there's no hope. They're completely lost. They, there's just nothing there. There's nothing. They're at rock bottom. And why are the people of Israel represented in this way? It's because, first of all, they're far from home. Now, when we think of home, we think of it as a safe place. We think of it a place, of a place we want to get back to, when, especially when things go wrong. We think of a place where we can be at ease, where we can be ourselves, where we can feel comfortable, at rest. And in a way, there's more to this than just being in exile. It's about people being away from God. They're not at rest. They're not at peace. They're separated from God. And this separation is really their own fault because they've turned right away from God. They've been worshipping idols, the old, old story. And we, we think of this and we say, idols, well, we don't have idols. Well, we do have kind of idols sometimes um, in life today. So they've turned their backs on God. And they, their lives are horrible. They've been living really sinful lives. They've sunk so low that all the nations around think of them as the lowest of the low. And that's where they are. That's why that vision of the bones in the valley is so good. And then what happens? In Ezekiel's vision, God says to Ezekiel, can these bones live? And the, the reply that God gives is, only you can say. It is only God who can rescue this situation. And how does God rescue this situation? by breathing life into them, the life of the spirit. The spirit lives on even when the bones are dead. They come to life 
and they are renewed. They're, they've got hope. They can start again. Even when a situation seems desperate, God can breathe new life into it. When we are in desperate situations that we think there's no hope for, God can bring life into it, bring hope to us. Um, some of you may have seen the film The Shawshank Re Redemption. It doesn't matter if you haven't seen it, because I'm just going to tell you briefly about an image that might help you. <clears throat> in this film, there are prisoners who have been in prison 20 or 30 years. They live under a horrible regime. It's brutal. Very little food. Nothing, nothing. They walk around shuffling like old men, and some of them are not old. They're certainly quite young when they went in. They shuffle around, their heads to the ground. They're in despair. And then one day, one of the prisoners, a man called Andy, gets hold of a tannoy system. And on this tannoy system, he manages to broadcast a beautiful aria. And the men can't believe it. There's something of beauty, of truth, and their heads come up. They're given hope. Hope is a precious commodity. When all seems lost, if we have hope, we can carry on. And this hope that God brings is the hope of the spirit, this inward part of us that we sometimes deny. And it's no coincidence that this reading comes in Lent. We're still in Lent. We're moving towards the time when Jesus dies on the cross, when we think all hope is gone. And then there is the wonderful resurrection. In death, even in death, there is hope. And that is the message of Ezekiel. And now we come to our next hymn, and it's 354, Come living God when least expected. <clears throat>
Our second reading is taken from John, chapter 11, starting at verse 1. A man named Lazarus, who lived in Bethany, was ill. Bethany was the town where Mary and her sister Martha lived. This Mary was the one who poured the perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. It was her brother, Lazarus, who was ill. The sisters sent Jesus a message. Lord, your dear friend is ill. When Jesus heard it, he said, the final result of this illness will not be the death of Lazarus. This has happened in order to bring glory to God, and it will be the means by which the Son of God will receive glory. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet, when he received the news that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days. Now from verse 17. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been buried four days before. Bethany was less than three kilometers from Jerusalem, and many Judeans had come to see Martha and Mary to comfort them over their brother's death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, Lord, my brother would, have, would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask him for. Your brother will rise to life, Jesus told her. I know, she replied, that he will rise to life on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she answered. I do believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And from verse 35. Jesus wept. See how much he loved him, the people said. But some of them said, He gives sight to the blind man, didn't he? Could he not have kept Lazarus from dying? Deeply moved once more, Jesus went to the tomb, which was a cave, with a stone placed at the entrance. Take the stone away, Jesus ordered. Martha, the dead man's sister, answered, There will be a bad smell, Lord. He has been buried four days. Jesus said to her, Didn't I tell you? that you would see God's glory if you believed. They took the stone away. Jesus looked up and said, I thank you, Father, that you listened to me. I know that you always listen to me, but I say this for the sake of the people here, so that they will believe that you sent me. After he had said this, he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. He came out, his hands and feet wrapped in grave clothes and with a cloth round his face. Untie him, Jesus told them, and let him go. Here ended the second lesson. May God bless his whole readings from his holy word. In our New Testament reading today, we heard about Lazarus, who Jesus knew along with Lazarus' sister, 
Martha and Mary. Lazarus was seriously ill and the sisters informed Jesus about this, but Jesus decided to stay where he was for two more days, saying that this happened in order to bring glory to God and to the Son of God. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already died and had been buried in a tomb. Mary said to Jesus that had he been there, Lazarus would not have died. Jesus took pity on her and went to the tomb where he ordered the tomb to be opened up. Martha said that there would be a bad smell as Lazarus had been buried four days ago. But Jesus replied, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believed? After the stone sealing the tomb was taken away, Jesus called out to Lazarus to come out and Lazarus appeared, wrapped in grave clothes. Sylvia has talked about the film The Shawshank Redemption and the hope and beauty that were given to the prisoners when the hero Andy played the beautiful aria over the prison tannoy system. The Lazarus story of his being called out of the tomb into the world of the living is another image depicted in the film. After 20 years of determined resistance, Andy, who was incarcerated for a crime he didn't commit, managed to chip away the last bits of his tunnel and make his escape via a filthy prison sewer. As he emerged from this dead and stinking tomb into the river outside, we experience his relief and joy in a scene that resembles an act of worship. As he celebrates the act of his deliverance, all that happened before is in the past, and a glorious, hope-filled future is before him. For Andy, this is a resurrection moment, and this deliverance brings hope to all the other prisoners. The Lazarus story shows us that the eternal life that Jesus gives to his believers does not abolish death, but goes beyond it. What matters is belief in the power of Christ to transform our lives. Jesus says to Martha that believing in him is what life is which suggests that eternal life can begin now. We don't have to wait until we die. Belief in the power of Christ to bring about hope and resurrection in our lives can let us overcome the struggles in our existence. It might not take them away, but we will be empowered to overcome them. Faith enables us to see beyond conventional limitations and that hope raises prospects beyond our imaginings. In Ezekiel's vision, the people of Israel appeared lifeless, dried up and hopeless after years of exile. Could God effect a rescue? And in the Lazarus story, how could Jesus revive Lazarus? All hope had been abandoned. Jesus said to Martha, didn't I tell you that you would see glory if you believed? As Christians, we are called to testify to hope, to believe that no place is too dark or too desperate for God to effect a rescue. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life.
those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. The big question that Jesus puts to us is, do we believe this? Do we believe that Christ can rescue us from all that deadens our lives and stifles hope? Can these dry bones live? Do we believe that God's purpose cannot be frustrated by those who seek to crush hope and diminish joy? Renewal starts with us finding and enacting hope as we show God's loving embrace of us all and draw upon God-given human capacity to resist defeat and choose life. We live in troubled times with a vicious war being carried out in Ukraine and the lives of innocent people being ripped apart. May we reach out and enact hope in our hearts and in the hearts of all those who suffer at the hands of evil men. Amen. We will now sing hymn number 302. O breath of life, come sweeping through us. Hymn 302. Let us pray. Loving God, at the very beginning, you breathe life into all creation, and we see you in sun, moon, and stars, flowers, birds, and oceans, and in the faces of people you have given us to love and care for. We thank you, Lord. You breathe new life and hope into impossible situations. We bring to you people and places where there seems to be little hope, for you love the helpless and the hopeless. 
We pray for people throughout the world who live under corrupt regimes where to speak out is punishable with death. Victims of war have lost loved ones, their homes have been destroyed, and they cling on to life with little food or warmth. We think particularly of the people of Ukraine. The people of Syria and Turkey have suffered the shock and fear of earthquakes. And in Mississippi, many have lost their lives and homes have been flattened. We think of those living on the streets, those who cannot return home because of broken relationships, those who can scarcely make ends meet. We pray for night watch and food hubs. We pray for leaders of every nation. May our leaders have vision and compassion and find ways to work together for peace and justice. And may your church in this place be led by your spirit and be a beacon of hope in our community. There are people known to us who are lonely, bereaved, sick, and in pain. We offer names to you in the silence. Lord, we bring all our prayers to you, knowing that your spirit brings light and hope to every situation and that you do not leave your people comfortless. We ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now sing our final hymn, Love Divine, or Love's Excelling.
thank you very much to Alan and to the choir, to our readers, and to the team at the back, and especially to Mike, who provided the music for the, the dry bones, which I hope you enjoyed. As we leave here today, may we know in our hearts that our God of hope can breathe life into impossible situations. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.